Welcome to Nintendo Dispatch, your weekly Nintendo podcast covering all things from the world of Nintendo. I'm James Mott's Montemagno. And I'm Michael Rivette. We did it. We got a little bit closer though. That was good. That was good. <laughs> I need a I need a cool nickname though. I feel like with just my normal name, it's it's not as cool. You could do Michael S. Rivette because your yeah, S is everywhere. I do. Yeah. I put my S. My S in everybody's business. <laughs> Classic Michael. This is a big, big week. Episode one. You know, we had our big, long, crazy episode zero that I hope everyone enjoyed. But <laughs> a lot of stuff has happened. This has been a crazy, ridiculous week leading up to launching this podcast. But also just in the world of Nintendo, I thought the news was not going to stop. It just kept going. There was a lot. So let's just jump right in. Like, let's let's hit this with the ground running here. Um, the very first and the most important thing, I think, in the world of Nintendo is that there is a new president. There's somebody, a new person in charge at Nintendo. So what happened, I guess, last week on Thursday, they were having their financial report. And it was announced that Tatsumi Kimishima, I'm hoping I'm not butchering these names, um, will step down. And he is going to be replaced by Shantaro Furukawa, right? Sound good? Yes, I think, that I sounds think I correct. That. correct. Yes. So a little bit about Furukawa is that he actually joined in with Nintendo in 94. So he's been around. He is not a new guy. He was on the board for Nintendo, but he was also on the board for the Pokemon company. So he is familiar with Nintendo. He has a passion for Nintendo. And apparently he had a very big role in the Nintendo Switch marketing. So, you know, this this person knows Nintendo. Um, he is fluent in English. So I think that's going to be great. That's probably a lot less... Well, I want to say a lot less awkward moments at like announcements in E3 and things like that, but maybe not. Um, and one of his favorite games is Golf Story. Now, I also play Golf Story, so I'm I, this guy can't be half bad. I really enjoyed that game. I like that. I thought that was a really interesting fun fact when we were looking up a lot about Furukawa-san. Why this is so important, it's actually really interesting because uh, Yamauchi had been president for over 50 years. And then Awada-san took over as the fourth president of global Nintendo after, you know, being president of HAL laboratory for so long and, and rest in peace, Awada-san. And then with uh, Kimishima-san taking over, he'd really only been there for a few years, but he was also the second president of Nintendo of America before fils took over, mm -hmm. which is really interesting. So there's just, I don't know where uh, Kimishima-san is going to go or what he's going to do next. I don't know if he really announced it, but it's really quite interesting. I think uh, he looks young. You know, like you said, he's young. Yes. Uh, and maybe that's good, having kind of this generation of Switch be so successful. So there's also a lot of other things happening, not just the president's change, but also some new board directors. So it's kind of like a new new year kicking it off uh, for Nintendo. So I'm pretty excited about it. I think that's perfect. I'm excited to see the fact that he was involved with the marketing of the Switch. I think he knows where the Switch is going. So I'm excited for that. I want to see, you know, you, it's nice that he's a younger president. So it, there's young blood. And I think there's going to be a new energy that's coming into Nintendo. I don't think that's ever... I mean, it could be a bad thing, but I don't think it's going to be in this case. We can see from that level of Nintendo Switch success is not only were there these announcements, a lot of this occurred around the 2017 fiscal year report earning coming out from uh, Nintendo. So on uh, last Thursday, this came out. And what was really interesting is now we have these big changes, but they released a lot of numbers. This was bananas to me because I'm used to seeing speculation of numbers, but they really got fine granular uh, in here. And the Switch already has sold nearly 18 million units, 17.79, uh, which is already 4 million more than the Wii U that sold in its entire lifetime. And it's only been a year. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, we knew this thing was a slam dunk, but these numbers really just, just put that in perspective. Yeah, I'm pretty blown away by it, but also blown away by the game numbers. So I'll break these down really quick. I don't want to harp on it too much, but some really cool things, at least from the Nintendo sides. Uh, well, one, Super Mario Odyssey, the best-selling Switch game, selling 10.41 million copies. That's That means that six out of every 10 people have Mario Odyssey. That's bonkers. That's um, crazy. Yeah. And I, I own it. You own it. I do. I love it. I beat it. Yeah. I haven't 
played it yet don't don't yell at me everyone's <laughs> everyone's gonna try to buy i have too many well, you, things that you probably bought like five of those copies so that you, <laughs> I did. you just haven't played any of them but i will say i have played every other game on this list so mario kart 8 deluxe edition 9.22 million copies which is crazy because 8.42 million were sold for the wii u Better yet, Breath of the Wild, which was almost sold one to one at Switch launch, has sold um, 8.48 and is now the best selling Zelda game of all time. Um, Splatoon 2 has outsold Splatoon 1 by over a million copies, which is really amazing to see Splatoon 2, which we'll talk about a little bit later, um, really come out of the gate running. And then Kirby, which Michael and I, I cannot believe this has happened. Kirby, best selling Kirby game ever. The brand new one for the Nintendo Switch, 1.26 million copies already sold in the first month. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the bar was probably set pretty low if people are saying that this is a Kirby game and it's like, oh, clearly it's that's just not a game for me. You know, when we've mentioned this in the past, but Kirby just seems like if this is a quintessential Kirby game and it's super po- popular, then clearly that's just okay that's the bar wasn't that high to begin with yeah maybe i'm missing something but i don't know i was even talking to my friend jesse and he was like i just don't see it and i was like i don't know i read the ign review and watched and they're like it's amazing and i was like i played both levels of the demo and i still don't get it so if listeners if you are a kirby believer and you you are need us to buy this game then convince us somehow via email go to nintendo dispatch.com so if so would you say that you would be her believers oh my goodness <laughs> terrible that's the name of the episode <laughs> oh. all right so that's done so moving on to actual good stuff about e3 nintendo had been sort of sitting on the schedule they hadn't really released the plans but that's changed so right now june 11th there is a splatoon 2 world championship the finals well, the finals, the finals will be on the 12th. It starts on the okay. 11th, and then the finals will start be on the 12th. Um, is this something, like, I know you're a big Splatoon fan. Like, you've played the first one, and, and mm-hmm. now it's second. Are you excited about seeing anything with the World Championship? Yeah, I actually tuned in a little bit this past weekend um, when they were actually doing the prelims online on YouTube streaming. You know, that was pretty interesting just kind of watching. I really think Splatoon is a really fun game to watch. And mm. and some of the battles can get so close to, you know, just a 0.1% of the inkage. So to me, I'll be interested. I'm, I'm, I'm really interested in seeing that they're getting into the esports space more and whether that this was good. Hey, arms didn't stick. So this one did. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. Mm. Yeah. No. And that's actually, that's a good point because that's going to come back in with our topic later at the end of the podcast. So yes, I think Splatoon either, you know, I never played the first one. I have been playing the second one. I enjoy it. I, there's still some weird quirky things that bother me about it when I do play it that I feel like keep it from being a truly competitive, um, game. Like there's just, when you get your breakdown at the end, it just doesn't give you enough data to say, okay, I was, you know, very important in this battle. I, I just never know what information it's showing me. It seems very just it's hard to know like all right well where did i was i in first place for the team mm. how can i better myself so splatoon I, I i don't care a whole lot about the world championship but i will probably tune in and watch some of it so on the 12th there's the video presentation i guess it would be like the e3 direct you know mm-hmm. the longer where it's covering all of the game titles including the new super smash brothers now i think with the super smash brothers there was a lot of back and forth as to whether or not this is a new title or a you know um a uh, a port yeah like a rehash a port over to the switch i think the fact that they are they are promoting and talking about this game so much for e3 is is kind of painting it as this is obviously a new title. They want to really showcase that. I don't think there's any more dispute in that. It's got to be, right? I mean, yeah. they made a huge point to call out, we're showing this. Um, so that's great. I'm excited for that. I, I hope it's not just Super Smash Brothers. I hope it's not just um, 
you know, a whole thing about that. I, I'm really excited for a few other games and I, and I want to hear more about that. So also right after the vid video presentation, there's the Treehouse live. And I guess this is like two or three days long of them just talking with members and devs and showing a lot of gameplay about the various games they cover in the direct. And then right after Treehouse on the 12th, when um, the finals for Splatoon 2 wrap up, you're going to have a Super Smash Brothers Invitational. This is cool. I guess I'm not super excited about it. It doesn't really mean a whole lot to me. Um, I, I'm excited to see Smash Brothers again. I mean, I really loved that game, but I it's not something where I'm on the edge of my seat like some people. I think they really get super excited about Smash Brothers, and I'm it's cool. I mean, I'm not, you know. I mean, I think this is a very typical Nintendo E3 schedule. A lot of people came out and were like, oh, this is going to be, you know, a crazy year. It is Smash Brother heavy, which I like that there's not only just some we know that they're going to talk about Smash Brothers. Hopefully they'll talk about the content rollout like they did for Wii U and 3DS, but also that they're going to have this invitational. They're going to do some more esports. The The Treehouse Live, very similar to the uh, video presentation that they did. So, again, this is not going to be a live no. pr traditional presser that's not nintendo anymore they're over it they're gonna just the tree house the tree house yeah and i watched the tree house a lot and in fact last year i do they announced games during the tree house they announced the new metroid 3ds game during the tree house which i thought was crazy because it's a new metroid game yeah how would you not mention that yeah oh i hope I hope we I hope we see Metroid for just a little yeah. bit, just a little bit more than a logo. Just anything. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And I know we will wrap back around and we will have a uh, E3 predictions. I, I don't even want to say predictions, but I guess hopes and dreams episode. Um, but yes, that's I want to see just something, just a little bit, just to give me a, a taste of what that game could possibly be. Yeah, just a one a little bit. I mean, like I said, we're going to go over it a lot, but I think this is a good schedule. I'm glad they're doing a little bit more. It feels like Nintendo amped it up, you know, not to 11, but maybe to like a nine. Yeah, I think it's going to be it's going to be good. I, I want to see. Um, uh, I, I just keep getting wanted into the prediction, but I just want to see a little bit of Pokemon, too. OK, there, I'll, there I'll leave go. it at that. I'll leave it at that. Michael wants to see a little Pokemon. I want to see a little Metroid. Let's see what Nintendo does for us. That's it. Yeah. All right. Some other weird news that I came up in my stream and I'm sure everyone has may have seen was it seems like every single console that comes out, people just want to hack it. Every device, every phone, they want to try to hack it. They want to get free games or put, you know, their own homebrew software on it. Uh, this is not me that I'm not about it. I think 20 James was like, oh, that's so cool. But, you know, 31 year old James like, ah, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, I just want to play. But there are some uh, reports out from both the Verge and Ars Technica that I was reading through is that they said there is an unpatchable exploit that makes every Nintendo Switch hackable to run Linux software and potentially their your own homebrew software. And this is actually not in the mm, Switch um, software or something else. It's actually in the NVIDIA Tigra X1 based systems, which also powers my uh, Android TV that I have. And apparently they were able to, you know, run some custom ROMs and bootloaders on it. I'm not really in the Linux community or really about doing this stuff, but um, from some early reports, um, I mean, you could, I guess, potentially at some point figure out a homebrew system to you know, download games illegally or something. It's just not really my thing. If I want a low end powered Linux browser, I'm just, I'll buy a <laughs> Chromebook or something. I, that's kind of me, you know, that's how I look at it. Mm -hmm. But uh, also this may end up, um, you know, this may end up being some new hardware in the future for if Nintendo does have to tweak some things, maybe there'll be some hardware modif modifications uh, that'll come in future switches, which I think you and I both predicted will happen at some point. Yeah, I, I think it's we're going to see a new chipset that fixes this this issue. I don't think there's going to be any fanfare. I don't think they're going to say anything. It's just going to be kind of like, oh, it's got a new chipset well, and it's going to go out on the shelf. Um, I, I I'm very much like you in this. This it's it's, you know, hacked and I, I don't care. I really don't. I, it's not something I want. I just want my switch. I want it to work. I don't want some something where I have to worry about it falling apart now because I've got some janky software running in the background. I don't care about this. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm over it. I don't care. I mean, yeah. what I do care about is that Nintendo, you know, pays attention to it because what I don't want to see is a lot of people hack the 3DS to get steel games 
and that hurts independent developers. So you don't want to see that. Um, I love the eShop. I continually buy games, even talk about some that came out this week that were $2. I'm all about some $2 games, having a lot of fun. Sure. Well, let's talk about some actually other little tiny announcements before we go into new releases um, that had come out, which were... Nintendo seems to be releasing information in 8,000 different places, sometimes via Twitter, sometimes on the actual Switch, and then sometimes just on YouTube. And this week, they released three new teaser trailers for Wolfenstein 2, NBA Playgrounds 2, and Sonic Mania Plus. They were release date trailers, and I'm just going to break them down, then we can discuss them really quick. Um, The first one is Wolfenstein 2, which I've been looking a lot forward to. This is coming out on June 29th. Uh, And the highlight, I would say, of this trailer was the kind of showcasing the motion controls. Uh, Maybe we'll just do one Mm -hmm. at a time. Um, I think that's probably better. But I've been (laughs) I've been amping up on this because I played Doom uh, on my Xbox one. And I actually really want to buy it when it goes on sale on my switch. But I never played Wolfenstein 2, but it looks cool. And I heard the motion controls on Doom for Switch were amazing. Hmm. I'm the same with I've never played Wolfenstein, um, but I'm excited for this only because it's it's it feels like more of a hardcore game to me you know this is this is a very much departure from what you would typically see on a nintendo console i think that it feels more adult it feels more hardcore gamer and i'm all for that so i may even buy it just to play it and support it because i want to see more of that on the switch and i think you wrote you have in our show notes here you know we you said realistic hardcore gamer where doom is very futuristic but and really crazy and bloody and whatnot but yeah wolfenstein 2 is more realistic real world so hopefully we'll see some other things like a call of duty or things like that coming down the line yeah that that's that's going to tie in with our topic so We'll see. Um, NBA Playgrounds 2 uh, coming out summer 2018. Who knows what that means? But I actually own the first one. Uh, I don't know. Did you play Playgrounds at all? I didn't. No. Uh, So I picked this up only because they came out with Playgrounds and Playgrounds Deluxe Edition. I have no idea what the difference was, but it was on sale for $10 on the eShop. And I go, I like NBA Jam. It's like that. You know, (laughs) it's got to be like that. And it's, um, you know, the here's my problem with it is that you have to unlock all the basketball players by going through tournaments and getting card packs, like almost trading cards to unlock them. But like, Mm -hmm. I just want to play LBJ. Like, I don't know anything about any basketball players. So I wanted it to be simplistic. It's a little bit more complicated than I wanted, but I, I did have a lot of fun. Like it's totally worth $10. So I'll be interested to see what the difference is because i don't know how much they can improve on the first one the Mm -hmm. load times they can improve that was a little long but okay um and the last one which i've actually pre-ordered already apparently uh best buy sent me an update that i had pre-ordered this and i forgot (laughs) but um it was sonic mania plus now this is actually the update to sonic mania which already came out which is the update to you know remixing of the original sonics uh, this is coming out for 30 bucks on July 17th. Apparently, you can download all the content if you already own Sonic Media. But the uh, additional things are some new, uh, this thing called Encore Mode, uh, plus a four-player competition mode, uh, and a few new playable characters, which are Mighty and Ray. And I don't know anything about the Sonic universe anymore because I haven't played Sonic in a while, but we know Michael is a huge Sonic fanboy. Yeah, I mean... I like, I do like Sonic. We mentioned, we talk about this briefly in episode zero that, you know, Sonic was something that got me over at Genesis. Um, speaking of Mighty and Ray, I feel like those are basically Knuckles and Tails, just kind of rehashed and reskinned. Mm-hmm. But, you know, that's cool. I would check this out. I think, I think you and I have had this conversation on and off the podcast that we basically just want all games on the switch. So if something comes out on the switch, that's where I want to be buying it. And in this case, I like Sonic. So yeah, I would probably buy it on the switch. Uh, I'm pretty excited. I'm, like I said, I'm excited for these three games. I'm glad that I'm glad that they're announcing things. It feels almost as if they're Nintendo games with the official Nintendo YouTube announcing it, which I think is kind of cool, especially going into E3. Like they could have held back everything for E3 and be like, oh, it's coming out next week. But it's kind of nice just to be ready to say, oh, like I know at E3, I'm probably going to hear about the fall releases and next year. But it's kind of nice to be like, oh, there's a bunch of cool stuff coming out in the next few months. Yeah, I, I even hope some of that happens at E3, where it's like, mm-hmm. you know, we're going to see something amazing. It's out next month. I would love that to, I, w- I, 
I want that to stop being a trend with E3 where we see something amazing and oh, you know, this is something I get to play in three years. Um, Nintendo is better about that than most. So we'll see what happens. So in addition to that, last week, let's go over to the new releases for the video games. Um, We're just going to bang through some of these. If you feel like you want to chime in and, and share some some thoughts, feel free. Last week, Splatoon 3.0 came out. So I was unaware of this, but this has some um, new content. And I think it's a lot of under the hood also for the downloadable content that's going to be coming out. I think they tried to get that prepared and ready. But some of the new content is they changed up the progression so that when you're in ranked battles, um, the way those are now... I guess weighted is a little bit different. There's new music, there's new gear. So headgear, clothing, shoes, things like that. And then, like I said, some of those fixes and adjustments. Um, I haven't been playing Splatoon 2 in a while. So I I haven't even really been paying attention to this, but I guess that's cool. But I, I'm just glad they're still supporting this game. I'm going to jump back sure. into it in the next week or two. But yeah, I'm excited for it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it's a it's a big hit. You, you got to keep people coming back. Um, another game came out, South Park. Fractured but whole. <laughs> <laughs> I had never played the... <laughs> I never played the original. So I hear that was fantastic. I have not played this. I may try. I don't, I don't think the original South Park... Did, did it come out on Switch as well? Has that been re-released on Switch? Or is it just this? This is the problem, actually, because... I was listening and researching this a a little bit more, and I don't think that this one actually has all of the downloadable content in it. I think there's another pack coming out later, but I believe if you had purchased uh, the fractured butthole on... Oh, geez. Uh, On on other consoles that it actually came with the first one. And I don't believe this one comes with it. So it's a little bit of a downer. And this is a full $60 game compared to now. It's actually like sub 20 bucks, 30 bucks on other consoles. So that's, yeah, it does. Apparently it's absolutely amazing. So I don't know. That's how, that's how I am on it. Um, But I did, I did pick up the next game on our list that I'll talk about um, before we, because these, we usually aren't going to go over last week's week because we'll have talked about them already but we're going to go an extra 10 minutes on this episode since it's our first episode just because we need to talk about this stuff they just came out and we got to play them but i picked up this game called lightfall and this was actually a kickstarter that was only going to be on steam but then came to the switch and it's a platformer it's not it's somewhere in between celeste and um like a really fast runner so you can run really fast but the unique part here is that there's there's a lot of dialogue in this game. It boots really fast. You play this little tiny character who's on some crazy world. I don't know. But it's really dark and really beautiful. I just played it today for about 45 minutes. It's a $15 game, and it's really pretty. I'm really enjoying it. The unique thing is that this character can spawn blocks that it can stand on four times. So you can do these huge jumps, spawn a block, jump again, jump again, jump again. You get really far and go really fast. Uh, and you have some additional power, so you can like shoot the block really fast. And you can also move a block. So if there's lasers, you can block a laser. So it seems really fun. Uh, from the first 45 minutes, I couldn't put it down, and I was kind of all about it. So I'd recommend nice. it based on the first 45 minutes alone. Excellent. Uh, the next one on our list is, I, I believe this is Jotun? 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 I don't know. Valhalla Edition. Um, it's a hit. I was watching the trailer for it. It's beautifully Mm hand-drawn. It's an action exploration game set in the Norse mythology. So I don't know if that's Jotun, uh, how the name would be pronounced. But it's a $15 game. Looks beautiful. Very interesting the way the art style is. So something worth looking into. I'm not familiar with this. Korg Gadget. Now, do you know anything about this? It's not something I've used. So Korg is really interesting because Korg is a manufacturer of like keyboards, like Mm -hmm. keyboards, you know, like actually playing music and, uh, Korg actually made a bunch of 3ds games. So you can have all of the instruments in front of you and you essentially have a music studio on your 3ds and now they brought it to the switch 
And I've watched videos of people pl- making and playing music back on their 3DS, and it was amazing. Super niche. I mean, it's the nichest of the niche yeah. type of thing. But yeah. So is this something similar to like a garage band uh, type software where you can where you have you can layer the music and mm-hmm. actually make like audio files? Yeah, totally. You can totally make audio files. There's a bunch of synthesizers and drum machines, and I actually. I used to have uh, some friends back in Phoenix that they played music during their live shows with the 3DS. Really? Yes, yeah, crazy. That's cool. cool. Yeah. That's very cool. Yeah. I, like you said, very niche. Yeah. Okay. I think the next the next thing that we have to announce is definitely on you. I know you're excited, and I'm excited to hear what your thoughts are. Yes, the biggest release, which I was totally amped up for, is Nintendo Labo. It finally came out. Um, I've been waiting for it since the initial reveal trailer. And the Variety Pack, the Robot Kit came out. Variety uh, Kit has a bunch of different things like the fishing pole, the house, the piano, um, the little um, a race car. The robot kit is a huge robot where you go and smash things around. There's also a $10 customization kit, which I wasted $10 on, which I can say, don't buy that. It'll be a waste of $10, but there's some stickers. Uh, and this thing, we sat down this weekend, uh, Heather and I, we built the fishing rod and it comes in a big pack, a big, beautiful pack. It has a game cartridge that you put in, uh, uh, and that could guide you through, essentially building out the Labo accessories and toys. So we built the race cars. There's two of them. So if you have four Joy-Cons, you can race against each other and you can crash into each other. And my favorite part about that is that the RC cars utilizes the IR sensor on the Joy-Con. And on the Switch screen, you will see a green, it's almost like a Metal Gear Solid um, (laughs) style. night vision. (laughs) Night vision goggles of what's in front of you. So it's really cool. Uh, and that takes, that one takes, you know, five minutes to make 10 minutes to make. Then we built a fishing rod. That one took us, it sat anywhere between an hour and a half and two hours. We did it in an hour because it's, Mm. you know, two, you know, late 20, early 30 year olds that we can understand how to fold, uh, increase cardboard. I mean, that's, (laughs) I don't know if you've ever done any, uh, food delivery services or meal prep things like a hello fresh. Have you done those before? I have. Yeah. So you know how you're essentially being trained how to cut things? Yeah. Um, Labo teaches you how to fold cardboard. Like, do you love okay. to fold cardboard? Because we're going to show you how to fold cardboard. So so if you know, if you, if you already know how to fold cardboard, you can s- essentially skip those steps and yeah. speed up the process. So is what you're saying. we would punch everything out and then we would preemptively just start folding everything. While one person was building the first step, we would be folding all the other things to crease the lines. And we built a fishing rod. We both went fishing for about 10, 15 minutes. And we said, that's cool. And then we put it on our shelf. So I, so far I had a lot of fun building things. It was a really fun partner activity to do. I could see how it would be a blast with the kids. Yeah. However, Our fears that you and I had talked about, I'm sure, have come to light, which is that the games are very lackluster. But I do feel, Michael, as a preliminary, like even fishing, they could totally update this with a new fishing game and it would like really rock the socks off with Mm -hmm. an update to software. So I don't know what the drag is, but they need to give it a little oomph in there because Mm -hmm. fishing was fun. It feels the first time you snap some of the cardboard and it does a thing and you're like this is amazing like it feels really cool so like i'm happy with my 70 dollar investment i don't think i'll buy the robot kit um just because but uh, i don't have that much room actually that's our biggest struggle is where am i putting this cardboard um but i will say so far i'm pretty happy with it uh yeah i'm pretty happy with it all right that's awesome no i i i think for me without purchasing it I'm happy that something like this exists. I think it's creative. I think it's um, new. I think it's fresh. I would never buy it. <laughs> that being said. <laughs> so it's just, I don't, I don't see anything in this for me. I think that, like you said, for children or the act of playing, if you're somebody that loves the Legos, mm-hmm. maybe this would be something that you'd be into. But the problem with Legos, and I think, or the problem with this versus Legos is with Legos, you build something that can kind of be a display. You know, it's kind of something like you you built it and you can put it on a shelf and it's some. This is essentially just cardboard once it's done, right? And I, mm-hmm. and I think it's somewhat fragile-ish as well. So I just can't see, I, I don't want this sitting on my shelf. 
you know what I mean? I don't want to be showcasing these things. Yeah. Um, so I think that's that there's there's a weird area there that I think that's gonna be their problem. I'm amazed that it exists. I think mm-hmm. it's so interesting that they did it. I just wouldn't do it. I wouldn't buy it. Um, but that being said, I did see and and we have to talk about it really quickly, is that UPS jumped on this sort of Nintendo Labo cardboard thing and they did this amazing video where they take a UPS box and they make a, um, what is it? How did it is a Nintendo Labo toy container? And they built basically a suitcase for all of the Nintendo Labo sets to go into. And it's beautiful and it's funny. Um, definitely worth checking out that UPS commercial. It's super smart on their part. Yeah. And everyone can find all the links to everything that we're talking about, every game, every story in the show notes below huh, in your favorite podcast app. Yeah. I would buy this. Um, I would buy it. Yeah. So Nintendo <laughs> Labo, I wish that we had a lot of time to talk about it. I'll probably rehash it after I've built more, but you know, I've so far gotten about three hours of playtime. So I'm pretty happy with that. I don't, you know, and th- it's going to keep evolving. They're going to sell I mean, so gonna many. Be, they're going to sell so many. Yeah. They're going to sell so many. It's, it's going to evolve. And what I'm hoping is, though, it's they sell so many and there's still interest because yeah. I can see this becoming something great. Um, but I think there's going to be a, a large portion of that that feels the same way you do, where they say, yeah, that was cool to build. I'm bored now. Yeah. 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 That's how I feel as well. I think they're just going to sit there and then at some point I'll just get rid of them. But I can recycle them. And that's kind of nice. <laughs> so I won't feel bad about it. Uh, All right. Well, there's a bunch of things that we won't be able to play just yet because they're not out yet or they're coming out this week before we record. And we'll probably touch them on uh, again next week if we picked up any of them. But this week, a few things. We had a bunch of uh, upcoming arcade type games, arcade archives, 10 Yard Fight, uh, which is a football games coming out. Neo Geo Stakes Winner, which is a horse racing is coming out. Data East. Oh, geez. Here we go. Uh, Sly Spy Heard. All their games are pretty much Mm -hmm. terrible. Um, it's a side scrolling beat em up is coming out. I have not played any of these games ever. I was never a really arcade original kid. I was never a Neo Geo or Data East uh, type of guy. So I don't know if I've got No, I have no interest in any of these. Every time I see them pop up on the eShop, I, I don't yeah. care. I they just don't interest me, and I think they're a money grab in a lot of cases. Yeah. The big ones this week are going to be not professional construction, the simulation, but um, uh, there's a new uh, Timberman uh, Verse, which was a mobile game uh, that came over, uh, which looks really cool art style. But the big two will be, I don't know how to say this one, Nil, Nilumbra? Am I saying that correct? I'm thinking Nilumbra, but yeah, I think it's Nilumbra. Yeah. This game... It's super dark. Yeah. Super intense looking game. I was watching the trailer and it it is the the uh, ominous. Yeah, very ominous, very dark. It's It already came out on Wii U, on Vita, on, on different, on Steam and all the different devices. It's kind of fun when I see it not on the other systems, but here it looks real dark, side scroller, um, platformer. But I don't know. I think, I think had come this week uh, with... I'm telling you, Lightfall. I think I think that's the one to get. That's just me, but um, it mm-hmm. does look really cool. I, I wish there was demos to all these games that we're talking about. This is my big problem: is demos. Give me the demos. Um, but I wish they they all need to start coming out with demo. all of them, like especially this one. So Nintendo is releasing this week: Donkey Kong Country, Tropical Freeze. I never played the Wii U version, but I did hear this game is really really good. But I would kind of like a demo. I don't know how you yeah. feel about it, but I kind of want a demo. No, I agree. Yeah. I mean, look at maybe that's part of the problem, though. Look at Kirby. It, you know, oh, this is a great game. Kirby, uh, Nintendo. But OK, I played the demo and I didn't like it at all. Mm-hmm. So maybe the demo sometimes helps them, but in some cases could hurt them because, you know, maybe you're you're wanting this next top tier game and it's just not what you were hoping but in my case i would love to play demos yeah but here's the thing you are probably not going to buy the kirby anyways but what if you play the demo and you're like this is amazing because apparently 1.6 million people play the demo and then bought it (laughs) so just saying exactly (laughs) oh boy yeah no i'm i'm right there with you though i want i want demo and everything Oh, geez. So that's the releases. There's a bunch of other little things that I don't think we can go into because, of course, the eShop is flooded with shenanigans. Um, but uh, those are the big ones. The Donkey Kong Country, Country Free, uh, Donkey Kong Country, Tropical Freeze. Uh, I'm, I'm debating, but there's so many games I need to play right now. Um, yeah. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. 
Yeah. And I think that's a good rule of thumb for when you're listening to us, we are going to sort of take the top tier or something that's super special interest that we think there's a, there's a following for because it is so flooded. You know, you've got a lot of games on there that are, that are just not of interest. Um, so we can't go through every single one of them. Yeah. All right. So should we jump into our topic of the week? I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. So this is something I was thinking about, and I, I can't remember what sparked it. My question to you, does the Switch need a Battle Royale game? And I think the reason I came up with this is because there's been a lot of E3 chatter about Fortnite being announced. Um, and there has also been a lot of excitement and buzz brewing around this crazy justice, which is is, is planned for the Switch. Hmm thoughts well i will say i'm not a battle royale person um from my understanding mm-hmm. a battle royale is um you are dropped into this world with a hundred other people and it's last last person standing is that correct is that a battle royale essentially yeah and i i think the i don't know if it always needs to be a hundred but essentially yes you're dropped in you grab what you need and you battle to be the last yeah, one. Yeah, so PUBG and Fortnite are essentially the big ones. I think Fortnite might work really well on the Switch because it's doing bonkers on mobile currently. Um, these are free games usually, so I think that would be kind of interesting. I think even if they wanted to charge a little bit to get in. I think what would be an interesting about an announcement at E3 with something like Fortnite is if they were to announce Fortnite to launch with a Nintendo online service this fall. Yeah, I think that's so my here's my thinking on this. Right. And and this is the reason we do these topics of the week is because not only do James and I get to have a conversation about this, but we also think that these are great topics that we want the listeners to contribute mm-hmm. to. So we obviously want to know your thoughts on this. So I think that a battle royale game, let's say it is Fortnite. Now I've played Fortnite. I've played it on Xbox because it's not compatible with my Mac. Um, I've played it on mobile. I've played PUBG on mobile and Xbox again, because it's not compatible with my Mac. Um, so I, I do enjoy the game type. Now there's certain things about PUBG. PUBG mobile is better than PUBG on the console. Um, and Fortnite on the console is better than Fortnite on the phone. So I like the fun of Fortnite. I like the sort of crazy artsy style of it. I like that they have these very weird random challenges that are in there. Like, you know, they they do seasons just like a lot of, you know, if you have Overwatch or games like that, they do these seasons where you can jump in and maybe this, this week's challenge is you have to dance in front of eight no dance locations, which are marked by a, a, a sign with a person dancing with an X through it or something like that, you know, and that's wacky and fun and kind of, it adds a whole nother level to the game that makes me want to keep coming back to it. And like you said, there essentially you can do it all for free, but a lot of the times people pay to customize their skins it doesn't it doesn't help the game it doesn't make them better at the game it doesn't make the it's not paid to win but you just want to customize you want to stand out on the battlefield and i'm totally okay with that if you want to spend your own money uh um, i think but yeah i i think it needs an online mm-hmm. component if it's gonna work on the switch i think it also you kind of it's in high demand. It's trending. It's been trending for the last year. I think that yeah. Fortnite is a obvious fit. The audience, the the and the style of the game. I would probably actually play it if it was on the Switch. We also know what's interesting here is that um, having PUBG on mobile. I think that's what I messed up. But PUBG is on mobile. Fortnite I don't think is on mobile. Uh, yeah, nope. They're both. Oh, they're there. both on mobile. So these games. They're both, both on mobile. Yeah. These both games being on mobile means that. The Switch can totally handle it. That's the other thing. It can handle it. it. Can handle it. Even if Absolutely. it's the mobile version of it plus something. Yeah, it can totally handle it. And I think I, I would imagine if I was the companies that are putting out those Battle Royale, the thing that's holding me back is the poor online experience that the Nintendo offers. Now, here's one concern, though. And this happens a lot with Nintendo. Um, and, I, and I actually saw a comment from somebody that, that was wanted this and i am totally against it It, i don't like it and that is they feel that nintendo should put out a battle royale game a a, you know a a new ip for themselves Mm. that 
is all Nintendo characters, <laughs> similar to a Smash Bros. No, that's a bad idea. That is no. so no. stupid. No. I don't want that. No. I don't want... Nite- I want Nintendo to put out their own because I think it would be kind of... I want it to be arcadey and yeah. fun and playful. I that's what I like about Fortnite. I like shooting somebody and seeing, you know, blue numbers popping up above their head when you're hitting them because it's it's arcade, it's fun. It's I like if you if you manage to kill somebody in it, the, all of their loot just kind of like you know, <laughs> like a Diablo style, like you kind of feel like you hit a jackpot. It's a game, it's an arcade. It feels fun. That feels more in line with what Nintendo would produce. I do not need to see you know Mario running around shooting at Yoshi. I don't want to see that. I don't want those those games are oversaturated as it is. I'm tired of that. I want Nintendo to put out it's a new IP that maybe is in line with what is currently trending and 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 very popular. If Fortnite or PUBG comes out, I can only see that making the the Switch more appealing to people. I still think the Switch has a little bit of a hard time with those hardcore gamers that are looking for that experience i don't think the switch appeals to that market yet but that's where that splatoon 2 that we were talking about is kind of got their toe in the water and i think where a battle royale or or something like that could really um start to push it now we also mentioned call of duty there's been some rumors that call of duty is going to come out there's there's been a lot of rumors about call of duty in the new black ops 4 but the idea is that there's a possibility Black Ops 4 is not going to have a story mode anymore. Mm. It's only going to have the the like the online oh, and a battle royale. Oh jeez. And they're saying Nintendo Switch might get the battle royale. Oh okay. As well. Interesting. Yeah, so that's super interesting. And that's one of, again, that's one of those games where it's like, you know, obviously I'd lo- I liked the 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 narrative. I liked the story-based part of Call of Duty, but if you got a level game like that with all of these achievements, all of these reasons to keep coming back, I think people would really start and, and it's mobile. Are you kidding me? I can bring that on a plane. I can bring that somewhere. Oh man. I think that's a game changer. I think that you almost are almost already like nailed it on the head because here's to me, I have really two inputs. The first one is what if they just added a battle Royale mode for Splatoon two? They already have sure. all the other elements are there, all the upgrade accessories, all the worlds, a huge world. And it's like exactly what you're talking about. That's what you need. Battle Royale, Splatoon yeah. 2. That could actually be really interesting. Be you already have this this setup there. I would like to see another one because yeah. I, I do, you know, because the inking is its own thing. Mm-hmm. I think if you did have, I, I don't know how you could have, because that was something I felt with Splatoon to it needed a free for all. Yeah. I don't know how you would have a free for all. That's so many colors it would be anarchy. Yeah. But if they could make it work, it could be it could, it be, could be cool. It could be cool. Yeah, it could be cool. You or t- maybe it's teams of like 50 on 50 and it's like this <laughs> giant map and you're just like run it's 2 hours of a game. <laughs> they just have disappearing ink. That's all they have. Um <laughs> Yeah, there you go. The thing that I'm kind of curious about have not playing these games is all right, so the Switch we said has this kind of lackluster online experience. But that is only in the fact that it kind of has lackluster, um, some matchmaking, which could be easily solved, but no voice chat. But do you need voice chat for Battle Royale games? Because people are playing this on mobile devices. No, you don't need it for... So a lot of times what happens in the Battle Royale is you have solo, duo, and squad, which is teams of four. So obviously if you're playing duo and squad, you want to be able to communicate with that person, which is fine. You don't necessarily need to hear the person you are shooting. Now on PUBG, a lot of times there is like you just talk and anybody in the vicinity can hear you, Mm. which obviously is funny at times, but also leads to a lot of, you know, people just kind of harassing each other and can become a toxic environment at some point. But um, I don't think it's necessary. I think you do need chat when you are working if you're if we want to talk about a competitive level, you need to be able to communicate when you're working together as a team, but it's not necessary if they're doing it as a solo and then maybe introducing it later on. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. Well, let's go ahead and wrap this puppy up for the week. We are way over time, but it was a big week and it was our introductory uh podcast. So um 
is there anything else you've been playing? I'll, I'll run down what else I've been playing really quick besides sure. Nintendo Labo. I talk about some of the other games. I recently picked up a few games on sale, which was Pac-Man Championship Edition 2. Super fun. I love the first game. This introduces just more Pac-Man. It's like Pac-Man on the extreme of getting ghosts. Um, good game if you want to pick it up. I also am addicted to pinball. If you know anything about me, I love Pinball FX3. It's my favorite pinball of the pinball. And I just picked up the Bethesda expansion which has fallout doom and skyrim levels super good no star wars stuff yet on the switch but i do have jurassic park uh, um, the family guy and bob's burgers pack and the walking dead pack so super good and then the final thing is i picked up the launch title originally was kamiko this is a um i don't know it's almost like zelda-esque style like top-down 2d you have three different characters you can pick from, one with a sword, one with a um, um, bow and arrow, and, and one with a boomerang thing. And it's about speed running, so the whole idea is trying to beat the game in under 30 minutes. And I've run through the game four times, and that was totally worth my $3. So, cool game. Yeah. <laughs> so, for me, I've got three that I'm currently going through. Death Squared. So, you had mentioned you're always looking for something to play mm -hmm. with Heather. This game is super cute if you haven't played it. It's it's essentially, it's two to four. I don't, maybe there's a solo, but I'm thinking it's two to four puzzle games. So, you have these little um, square cubes and you are trying, if you're a blue cube, you're trying to marker. If you're a red cube, you're trying to get on the red. But it, the games get more and more complex because there's like lasers and spikes and things that happen and it's very similar to a portal you, there's a there's a um like you're an employee and then there's an ai partner that works with the employee and basically both of you are both of them are just watching the squares the cubes move around and they kind of have a little banter while it's happening but the ai is very much like gladys from portal and it's that same very similar humor um so that it's it's really really well done i think there's like a hundred different challenges and it's cute and it's it's awesome wow. the other game i'm playing is stardew valley of course i think everybody knows stardew valley it's made by chucklefish it's it's like i guess a farm sim mm -hmm. <laughs> i really i'm starting to think about like what i would call it it's harvest man i guess yeah it's so stardew valley is very soothing it's very i've been playing it actually because um when i go to bed i always want to play my switch but a lot of the games i was playing were kind of like keeping me up mm -hmm. as opposed to sort of mellowing me out and stardew valley has just very soothing music and it's kind of relaxing and it's really really just beautiful and i just went through and beat steam world dig and steam world dig 2 these are made by image and form games SteamWorld Dig is is a platformer. Um, I guess it's what they're calling Metroidvania now. So it's sort of that side scrolling. And it, to me, it really was reminiscent of Dig Dug. If anybody remembers Dig Dug, mm -hmm. it's sort of you keep you're a miner and you keep digging deeper and deeper. And the deeper you go, um, you 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 find minerals that will later let you like buy better equipment for your robot, and it gets progressively like sh you get stronger and stronger as you go and and at first i'm like oh this is so easy i just dig but your your robot can only move in certain ways mm. so like if you dig past something you only got one block up that you can go back go like to get back to something and you when you jump you can't use your pickaxe so there's like a lot of things that start to happen where you you, you kind of like shoot now i gotta figure out a way to go back and get that jewel that I missed because I wasn't paying attention. Uh, they are excellent, excellent games. And they're, they're only like, I don't know, 12 or $15. So fun. I played them nonstop. I couldn't stop. As soon as I finished steam world dig, I had to go buy steam world dig too. And it only like got 10 times better when I bought the second one. Oh, man. It's so well done, but yeah, that's what I'm playing. There you go. So now you have about 8,000 games to pick up this week. Um, and, uh, we do promise that future episodes, we're going to keep them nice and tight at the, the 30 ish a minute mark is our goal. This week was a little bit different. Like I said, introductory, we wanted to recap all the great stuff that had just happened the previous week and couldn't leave out of course, Nintendo Labo and so much news, just ridiculous amount of news, especially going into E3. We'll, we'll see what we can do, but, um, I think it's going to do it for us. Of course, I want to ensure, you know, this is the first podcast. So reviews are really important. Uh, if you're using Apple Podcasts, just click on the podcast. You can scroll down to the bottom, leave a review. It means so much. 
Um, it actually really helps us out sharing it. If you're using Overcast or Stitcher to share it to friends, just tell a friend like, hey, you, you have a Switch. Check out this podcast. Uh, check out NintendoDispatch.com. That's where you're going to find all of our social media links uh, and also all the places where you can subscribe to this podcast. And of course, follow us on Twitter at Dispatch Podcast and James Montemagno, Michael S. Rivet. Is it MS Rivet? What's your Twitter handle, Michael? MS Rivet. Miss Rivet, essentially. Miss Rivet. Miss Rivet over there. Of course, you can find it on NintendoDispatch.com. And you can write into the show, of course. There's a little contact button. So do that. Until next time, this has been the Nintendo Dispatch. And thanks for listening.